Last month, we told you about a recent study that is forcing paleontologists to re-examine the timeline of dinosaurs before their mass extinction. Now, New Mexico's Beastie Badlands are once again challenging what we think we know about a particular type of dinosaur with the discovery of a brand new species. Chad Brummett has that story in this week's New Mexico Frontiers. We don't normally think of New Mexico's high desert terrain as one that would be hospitable for aquatic animals. But 75 million years ago, our state looked a lot different. This is what scientists believe North America looked like at that time, with a massive body of water cutting through parts of the South and Midwest. That seaside climate brought to the region one of the most abundant species of dinosaurs during the Cretaceous period, the hadrosaur, or duck-billed dino. Duck-billed dinosaurs have sometimes been called the cows of the Cretaceous. They are so abundant. However, if science has taught us anything, it's that we are not done learning about our natural world in the eons of history buried beneath our feet. Recently, paleontologists from five separate institutions in two different countries identified a new genus and species of the duck-billed dinosaurs, and its name is a tongue twister. A uh, she cellsaurus uh, wamani. A she cellsaurus wamani. Original specimens were found about 100 years ago. Then this museum was involved with excavating in the area, and they found a jaw that was similar to things that are at the Smithsonian that were found about 100 years ago. Co-authors of the study, doctors Anthony Fiorillo and Spencer Lucas, say that this new species was much larger than its cousins. Where the known duck-billed dinos were about two to three tons, this hadrosaur came in closer to eight tons. This animal was probably upwards of 30 feet long. We also know that these dinosaurs were herbivores, as evidenced by their teeth and jaws. So the duck-billed dinosaur had this big row of teeth. So these animals were living in the jungles that were just west of that seacoast. And that makes sense because they were big animals, they ate a lot of plants, they needed a jungle to feed them. But what we don't know is what else there could be in our state's famed Bistai Badlands which is why both New Mexico-based scientists say more field research is necessary. This animal comes from New Mexico, and so there ought to be more. There had to be at least two, right? And uh, so going back out in the field is, is the next step. We need to find more of this animal. Was it living in a place that was right by the ancient rivers? Was it way out on the floodplains? Did it prefer lake environments? Things like that that can possibly help us understand better the world the, the, that dinosaur was living in. And further study is exactly what both paleontologists have been doing at the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science while it's been closed for renovations. The scientific programs have gone on and we've been very active during the time of closure, both working in the field and working in the museum. New Mexico is a hotbed for paleontological discovery. That's well known. I'm so excited to be a part of a project that advances our knowledge here in the state. For New Mexico Frontiers, I'm Chad Brummett. Man, that is fascinating stuff. Well, the study was led by Sebastian Dahlman of Montana State University and included authors from Penn State, the University of Slovakia, Harrisburg University, and of course, the New Mexico Museum of Natural History and Science.